Season 2, Episode 20, It's About Time Fearfully anticipating a catastrophic event in Equestria's near future, and recalling how the return of Nightmare Moon was foreshadowed by the stars, Twilight Sparkle scans the heavens for anything out of the ordinary. While this action proves fruitless, something within the distant Horsehead Nebula does catch her attention something sufficiently out of the ordinary as to keep her attention for up to three hours, transfixed by what she thought she initially saw. Was it just a trick of the eye? Or did Twilight really see something out there? And if she did, what could possibly have been big enough to have been seen from such a distance? We have learned more about Equestria's home system in the past few years than at any other point in the show's history, due in large part to the release of the Cosmos Arc within the comics. A release that has granted us an unparalleled glimpse of the local solar system in its fullest extent. Unfortunately, for the time being, no in-universe attempt has been made to explore either this region or beyond. However, this has not always been the case. Decades prior to the birth of Generation 4, two inhabitants of the G1 universe had their own journey into the unknown, and according to their story, came face to face with beings the likes of which one can only dream of, a form of celestial life existing far out of sight of the inhabitants below. So just what were these beings? How did they come to exist? Are such forms confined to the past generations, or is there far more out there than even the ponies of Equestria can ever truly know? What were the great star ponies, and are they still around? The release of the 1986 animated special, Rescue at Midnight Castle, marks the first ever glimpse into the world of MLP, establishing a universe of fantastical and often mythological creatures surrounding the small country of Ponyland. However, many of the most fascinating elements of this universe came to light within a series of tie-in comics released by the UK branch of the publisher Egmont, a year prior to the release of the special. Much like in the case of G4, the comics followed a continuity distinct from the original animated media, expanding on the universe and introducing characters and ideas unique to its own timeline. In the universe predating the rule of the two sisters, our closest equivalent seems to be the character of Majesty. Surprisingly powerful and glimpsed only within the G1 comics, she is implied to own a crown, though is seldom ever depicted wearing it. Therefore, rather than full-time ruler, she seemed to take on the role of protector for the land, utilizing a crystal ball as a means of anticipating oncoming threats, and providing for her subjects where necessary with the help of her magic. The majority of stories within the comics take place around Majesty's home, Dream Castle, with most of the cast living within the vicinity. Indeed, such characters are far more numerous than their animated counterparts, often being portrayed based on the backards for the accompanying toy line. Events within G1 have the potential to be just as dangerous and downright strange as within G4, which brings us to the subject of the astral beings. Only five characters have ever seen such entities within G1, 
As such, in order for us to understand such a topic, we must first address each related story individually. A character from the Rainbow Ponies toy line, Starshine appears to share the ability to either control or interact with rainbows, utilising their almost supernatural abilities. This is important to know as it is the main reason we even have this story at all, as can be found on the character's backard. Upon request by Starshine, said character is immediately carried into the night sky, encountering numerous fascinating oddities. One of these is the Man in the Moon, inspired by the legend of the same name and an occasionally reoccurring character within the comics. However, by far the strangest observation is the Milky Way Galaxy's apparent communication with Starshine, raising the clear implication that some part of it is not only alive but sentient. Not long after, Starshine is returned home, the stars themselves seeming to call for her eventual return. Listed as a twinkle-eyed pony, Galaxy has two contradicting explanations for her curious illumination. In the comics, the effect is caused by diamond fragments entering her eyes from the shattered throne of the Jewel Wizard. Long story. However, the backstory described in the backard gives us a far stranger explanation. Whilst in the midst of a dream, the character's desire to twinkle in the sky is overheard by one of the stars at which point she is invited to join them. During this gathering, the character's desire is granted by a being known as the Little Dipper, through the application of Stardust. Even after returning to her physical self, Galaxy's eyes continue to sparkle brightly. As of right now, it's hard to judge where this event fits within the continuity of the character, given that Galaxy never demonstrated such an effect within the comics prior to the destruction of the Jewel Wizard's throne. This was either temporary or part of a parallel continuity. Was visiting the underwater kingdom of King Neptune. Long story, Majesty meets an old friend a hermit crab who can no longer find a shell for himself and feels out of place. Taking pity, Majesty offers him an alternative. Upon visiting the surface, Majesty points her friend towards the night sky and several distant clusters of stars. Closer examination reveals those clusters are actually creatures hovering deep within the night sky. Offered a place alongside such beings by Majesty, the old hermit crab gladly accepts. Just as with the story of Starshine, his voice can still be heard drifting down from above as he gleefully settles into his new home. While such accounts are certainly telling, nothing could prepare us for what our final story presents. The following events can be found within the pages of the story Moonstone's Midnight Adventure, the narrative itself revolving around the journey of Starshine, yes the very same, and Moonstone to acquire a new crown for Majesty as a gift. Their task requires three specific ingredients, a diamond from the Diamond Mountain, hidden within the Milky Way, Moonstone gems from the Moonstone Mines, and the labour of a being known as the Comet Crown Maker. Upon reaching the Milky Way, however, they soon encounter a large, star-covered Pegasus with a loud and stern voice. This, as Starshan explains, is the Great Star Pegasus, the guardian of the Diamond Mountain, and the only astral being to have received an illustration. While initially suspicious of the pair, he is quick to lower his defences upon hearing their reason for being there, and even grants a diamond from his collection in return for their assistance. Their next port of call is the storm-tossed planet of the Moonstone Mines. Hidden from view by a thick mist or fog, and encircled by seven moons. Here they encounter the Great Star Unicorn, 
a rather similar being with the role of mining a mineral called Moonstone, not to be confused with the character of the same name, which she is able to detect through magic and value through a mere glance. Far more approachable than the Pegasus, the being assists the two in acquiring said gems and leads them to their final objective, the Great Comet Crownmaker. Described as an elderly unicorn with a role of crafting various items of jewellery for rulers across the universe, he is most notable for the comet within which he resides, which he is able to manoeuvre as a vehicle. After creating the crown as well as a gift for both visitors, he assists the two in returning home, briefly landing the comet to drop them off. Before the night is up, he returns to the depths of space, leaving the two wonderstruck eyewitnesses bearing gifts from the stars. So, what can we establish about such beings? Firstly, we know said forms are massive, light blue in colour in the case of the star Pegasus, with numerous stars encircling their outlines. Almost all of them are based on known constellations, and traditionally Greek ones at that, the Big Dipper, Little Dipper, Milky Way Galaxy, and all the sentient stars we see being the only ones with a non-biological origin. The Milky Way is by far the largest known astral being, and one of the few that is not based on a pre-existing constellation. The account of Galaxy makes it clear that such entities can seemingly interact and communicate with terrestrial subjects via dreams. As of yet, the connection of such beings to Stardust is not fully understood. At the very least, the fact that said substance affected the character in both the dream form and in real life suggests some form of magic, the exact nature of which remains open to debate. While most astral beings are depicted as merely floating about in space, the great star ponies are very different, actively traversing the galaxy at will. The Pegasus version can seemingly fly through space, a feat accomplished thanks to an interstellar atmosphere that pervades the story's universe. While the unicorn variant lacks such an ability, they can easily transform near-Earth objects into forms of travel. Much of their activity is hidden from view, either in plain sight with the Diamond Mountain, or by environment as in the case of the secret planet. Said planet has fresh water in the form of rain, vegetation, and the evidence of local life as seen within the accompanying artwork. This would give such beings access to food and water, assuming they ever really needed it. Curiously enough, each star pony seemingly carries out a specific task that, when brought together, creates a production chain for the creation of jewellery specifically for those in a position of royalty. Indeed, such a factor is the first thing Starshine thinks about when faced with the possibility of acquiring the crown, meaning that such a process has to be of some significance, or at the very least, familiarity. While most of the known astral beings represent individual members of terrestrial species, the star ponies, specifically the unicorn form, have at least two known examples, the star unicorn and the comet crownmaker. This raises the potential for multiple beings to exist. Indeed, returning to the constellations, there is even the potential for an earth pony equivalent, a form that has, as of yet, remained unseen. Much like the Alicorns of G1, the astral being seems to be a transitioned form. While it is possible for such beings to be born or created, we have only ever seen such forms birth from pre-existing life. In regards to such beings, we have a number of options. We know Majesty can create astral life from terrestrial organisms, not to mention she has even been shown to give life to inanimate matter. It's even implied the character can control dreams, something very reminiscent of the beings from Galaxy's backstory. Not to mention it does seem strange that the peculiar production chain exhibited by the Star Ponies would uniquely benefit one of the few characters that could have created such beings to begin with. However, the ability to create astral beings may not be unique to Majesty. If we assume the substance of Stardust and, by extension, Star Beings have a magical influence, that might grant them said ability. 
either through transformation or duplication. Given that Galaxy's gift was granted in response to a desire the character had to twinkle in the sky, it has been theorized that Stardust did more than simply illuminate the eyes. That such a phenomenon was actually an early symptom of transition into an astral being, or even a partial transformation. Theoretically possible, though still somewhat questionable given the character's continuity. So overall, just what are the astral beings? Put simply, they are living constellations, mostly derived from existing life forms. Why and how they came to exist is another matter. Given her apparent ability to create such entities in the first place, Majesty still remains our most likely culprit regarding their initial existence. The more interesting question is, why do they exist? What might they be intended to represent? Taking a closer look, the story of Majesty and the Hermit Crab seems to be somewhat inspired by the story of the goddess Hera creating the Cancer constellation, albeit for a very different reason. Looking further into Greek mythology, we can actually find other examples of mortal life being transformed into constellations, always perpetrated by the gods. We know the MLP franchise has historically exhibited a heavy lean towards Greek mythology. Thus, based on this interpretation, Majesty would represent a deity. A notion that actually makes a lot of sense in context. From this standpoint, even the mysterious production chain makes a bit more sense as this would work to affirm the position of those in power, an excuse employed by real life monarchs and religious leaders. However, this isn't the only metaphorical interpretation. Returning to the story of Majesty and the Hermit Crab, some have even considered this tale as a possible metaphor for mortality. Even if this wasn't intended, it could be that the stars of the night sky are all the souls of those who have passed away. Thematic precedent or no, it's also possible such beings could simply represent their own unique form of spiritual life and nothing more. Given the context of the astral beings in a fantasy universe, it seems most likely for them to simply be a group of mystical entities who spend their time offering gifts, holding interstellar celebrations, and resting deep within the peaceful emptiness of the sky above. For as much as we now know about the great astral beings of Generation 1, there is still so much we have yet to find out and so much more we shall probably never know. Be them gods or something far stranger, they are without doubt worth remembering for their place within the history of MLP, as elusive as they were. For those interested, further investigation is highly recommended. Such entities may well have drifted into permanent obscurity, regarded as mere curiosities of decades past. However, such stories would not be the last we saw of the vast astral beings, which naturally leads us to wonder, what if the great star ponies never went away? Thank you all for watching, and I am curious to know what you think a G4 Star Pony would be like. Let me know in the comments below. It might even help with the upcoming episode. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this.